So, uh, turning back to Dennis, what what are we doing here, Dennis? I'm just gonna wire up a pick guard and do a quickie setup on a guitar here. I, some of my demos have been pretty long-winded, and I wanted to shorten it up a little bit. So, um, we'll finish up this guitar, and you guys can pass it around and play it. If somebody falls madly in love with it, I'm sure Frank would be happy to work out a deal with you to take your home. Handmade right here. Yeah, or, or you can wait till the next time a guy comes in and hand makes a guitar in front of you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that happens so often, right? <coughs> you guys, any of you guys work on guitars at home? Yeah, yeah. you do? I, I, I try to on the kitchen table. My wife's like, oh, you're not doing that again. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I try to change out my pickups and stuff. I definitely do not work on guitars at home. No. I don't want to do work. You know, inevitably when we do these these shows, we get some guys who are trying to um, become builders or get into it themselves. And Dennis, do you have any advice for people who work on their own stuff or are trying to, trying to build guitars? Go for it, man. It's just a guitar. It's not a nuclear device. <laughs> <laughs> You're not curing cancer here. I know a lot of the builders talk about uh, taking taking their guitars apart when when they were kids, or taking their dad's guitar apart. Mm, I took everything apart when I was a kid, not just guitars, everything. Yeah, I still do. Drives my wife insane. Why are you taking that apart? Always seemed easier than getting them back together, though. That's the key, <laughs> yeah. getting them back together. There's, There's always part. a few parts left. Where are these <laughs> extra parts? I <laughs> <laughs> it seems to work okay. There's just this buzz. Dennis, when you were drilling through the pickups, were you drilling threaded holes or just making Yeah, I was one? tapping them. That's tapping? Yeah. Yeah, I've done it without tapping them, and it's not a good idea. And they should turn nicely. Yeah. <laughs> make sure we're going to be in phase. What kind of pickups did you bring today? I don't remember. To be honest with you, because I packaged this up a few weeks ago. Do they have signatures? Yeah, they're Josefinas. They're hand wounds, but I don't. I, th I want to say maybe Fat Sixties. I believe it were Fat. It's on the spec sheet, but I don't remember. I think it was Fat Sixties. I asked for. Josefina. Um, she signs all on the backs of all her pickups, as as does Abby. So if you ever have an old custom shop guitar and you're wondering if uh, the pickups are hand wound, they they usually hand sign them on the back. So What's the biggest pickup sale that I asked for? Which pickup? Sure. Yeah, everybody really dug that Twisted Telly pickup. Uh, and the, the neck pickup in particular gives you some strat characteristics uh, uh, from your from your Telecaster. And I think part of the reason why uh, Brian was talking about that is um, pairing it with a broadcaster bridge pickup because you can flip down and get that real classic 50s right. sound um, but then when you're up in the neck position you get something a little more versatile I mean it sounds every bit of a, a telly but um, that pickup alone has some strat characteristics so it's really cool that we're starting to do some real customized pickups we're taking these vintage platforms and when he says fat 60s or fat 50s that's taking like the 1950s or 60s era pickups and they're overwinding them, you know, so they have a little more output. And, you know, the 60s pickups are a little more rounder than, than, than the 50s uh, naturally. So, um, you, you know, those fat 60s are really cool. They have a great, they have great character. Um, you know, we came out with um, these guitars here on the front of the tour guide are a limited edition that we did this year um, called the Ancho Poblano. And, um, you know, they wound a, a really um, hot, spicy set of pickups. Um, and we uh, designed a limited edition guitar around them. And they've been hugely popular. So much so that one of our series next year, I believe the uh, Postmodern series, yes. they're going to feature these pickups too. And we've been getting customer orders like, hey, can I just get a 1950 Strat with the Ancho Poblano pickups in it? So it, it, it's really cool that they're, they're taking these classic platforms and they're doing some, some cool different things with them. I um, love the Abbey ones, you know. I've got a couple of guitars with Abbey. Yes. And, uh, a couple of hosts with me. And do they find those good uh, builder specs? I mean, Sometimes. Is it here you're looking at? Like, as an example, I have a Rosewood Telly. Oh, beautiful. Dial those in because of the all rosewood body, or how would they do that? 
I don't I don't like to custom voice pickups to guitars. I think that's kind of dangerous. To me, that's saying that the voice of the guitar sucks. Um, they've talked about doing that, and I'm always against it. Like to me, the guitar's got to sound good way before it hits the pickup. And I always say, if you have a shitty singing voice, you're gonna sound crappy in a Neumann. You know, <laughs> you gotta the voice of the guitar has to be happening before it hits the pickups. And there's things that we do to make that better, like the way I dress the frets. I get more sustain and more tone out of the neck just by the way, kind of like what they do here with the Plex machine where it loads the rod and it does the same thing. Um, it, it's a similar type thing. Do they make any kind of a tool that, you know, like I'm always, not always, but, you know, yearly pull the necks off to adjust the truss rod on the strap? That's what Leo wanted you to do. Yeah. Well, there, yeah, there's uh, Is there a tool that fits it? Like the, the guy that makes our toolkits. Uh, Dan at Cruise Tools, just uh, within the last year, came up with what, what he calls the cheater driver, where you can sometimes sneak it in there. So Cruise Crew Cruise Tools. Yeah, he's. Yeah, he. Yeah, we've got it's not in the tool kit, the um, but he does sell a separate screwdriver. It's really long, and it's a very small blade, and he made it just for that. Huh? You have to notch the pick guard a little bit at the. They come notched. Oh, yeah. they already there. Yeah. Oh, okay. And all we do is when we do the bevel, we just. <laughs> you had mentioned when uh, the guitar is going to sound good, like the voice before the singer comes out, or whatever. If the pickups aren't on there, what do you do other than your own ear and what you hear? That's by it. Tapping or what? You, just ear. You rub on it or what? Do you no, just the you ear. Do? You know, you if you build enough guitars, you kind of know what they're going to do way before. But what are you listening for when there's no strings on it? Oh, when there's no strings so on you're it. Seeing the strings oh no no no! Out. It's you're when just, you strung you're just playing it. it. Okay, yeah. and then, so you're hearing what you want. Nah, yeah, there. You know, there's ridiculous pictures of guys holding a tuning fork up to a body yeah. and. Ta I mean, I can look at a spread and oftentimes tell if it's going to be good. Every now and then, though, you just get a guitar that refuses to be a guitar. It just no matter what you do, oh. it just sounds like caca. <laughs> That and, wood wanted uh, to be something else. It wanted to be something else. <laughs> and we're lucky in that if that happens, we can boot it. We don't have to set, send it. Yes. Okay, like guitars that age after a while. Is that, is it, with the, uh, I don't know, for the truth fact that they sound better after they age? They definitely do. There's definite, uh, that goes with any instrument. You know, you give go to a violin player and they pick up a new violin, the first thing they're going to say is, well, this just needs to be played. Acoustics, especially, you know, they gotta really just kind of find where they belong. Um, that sounds crazy and new agey, but it's true, you know. And uh, especially with old vintage guitars, uh, they're using nitrocellulose lacquer, and that's always dis dissolving as long as it's in the world. So the longer it's around, the thinner that finish is. So you're getting more wood. The wood is gonna age better and uh, have the right moisture content, equal equalize, and so the wood will dry out. Or, the lacquer will or crack take on moisture, or either way. Right. Yeah. So as that wood moves, the lacquer uh, will crack and, and, and let it do its thing. Yeah. Um, which is a, another thing that, you know, we talk about why we use that, that kind of eggshell thin lacquer finish. And it's, and you know, you get the cracking and the moving sometimes, but that's good. You, you, you want that, that. Yes, sir. No, I just, uh, I think that applies with pickups. As well. I mean, it does, and I don't understand the pickup part of it as much, like why they sound, older ones sound better, oh, yeah. but they clearly do. Yeah. And we've been fighting with that for a long time. Uh, do you notice that the uh, making of the wire is anything different than metal? No, I think metal we've spec out the wire pretty good. I think, if anything, um, steel tolerances have changed through the years. Uh, it's gotten a little thinner with more strength. So a lot of times when we punch out a part that was set up for tool, for steel back in the old days, it doesn't fit nearly as tight and it'll spring back. A good example is the uh, pickup cover on a jazz bass. If you look at the old ones, man, it's like very shaped. Ones we make now are a little more, uh, it's because the, the steel is thinner and it doesn't fit in the tool like it used to. They make it cheaper. How much we can do about that. Yeah, they're making it cheaper, but it's got the same strength and. It's just they were able to do more with less, I guess. You know, you're going to make a body. What are you looking for? Well, it depends. If you want a lightweight body, um, I'm going to look for grain that's very far apart. 
If you want a heavyweight one, I'm going to look for close grain. How about if you want it? This sounds great. Well, well, I'm going to talk to you then when you order the guitar, like, because um, I've made guitars I thought sounded just terrible, and the guy just sat there. This is exactly the voice I want. So wow. that's a subjective thing, you know. There's no black or white. There's so much gray area. So if you order a guitar, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to find out what you expect it to do, how you play. Uh, what kind of setup you're going to want on it. Um, you know, it's got to be custom, so. It's one of the things we offer on the, the master built guitars is it's so great that you, I mean, you get to talk to the guy who's going to build your guitar and, and he's going to ask you what kind of music do you play, where are you playing, you, you know, what, what are you looking for, and they're going to help you get on the right path. Um, and. What kind of stuff are you going to do for me if you like the guitar? You know, things like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the area, are we gonna, are you going to give me a steak dinner? What's going on? Uh, so I think a lot of that is is, is really important to, to some guys, you know? Uh, so, you know? Some people come in here to a place like Frank has a, 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 an amazing um, array of custom shop guitars, and they try yes, one, and, and eventually one speaks to them, and it's like, good. But, you know, when you're building something tailor fit to your, to your style, it's it's really a big thing to be able to talk to the, the, the person who's building it and, and have that conversation. We have a guy working at the factory named Dave Ronsky. He's in a band called Slacktone, and they're like uh, royalty in the surf music. I mean, he guy tours the world. You can YouTube them. You'd be shocked. They're they're incredible. But I I did a swapped out some pickups for him that he wanted for his Jaguar, and I was embarrassed. Oh my God, this sounds like total garbage, man. I mean, they sounded terrible. But he plugged it. He's like, oh man, it's perfect. So, okay. <laughs> in the right hands. Right? Yeah, in the right <laughs> hands. It, and it's what he was expecting. So, um, yeah. It's, Did it sound better when he played it, though? Oh, of course. <laughs> Everything sounds better when he plays it. He's incredible. Here I am. Well, like he Dennis was just saying, box. there's a lot of vibration in the headstock. So. There's a lot up there. I took a stethoscope to a well, guitar one off. time, and uh, the headstock was by far the loudest part of the guitar. Do you have a favorite? Would you like to work with for body? I, I'm a pretty big fan of mahogany. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I just always have, have liked it. Um, gener I generally tend to like ash guitars for some reason. That's just me. There's no right or wrong. That's just. Other than older and ash mahogany is what most most folks request them. Heavier, right? Than mahogany. It can yeah. be. Everyone see how nicely that drops into the cavity? That's yeah. like <laughs> paramount. <Yeah. laughs> Some of the production line guitars looks like a rat's nest in there. You got to stuff, and oh, so we try to keep Talk them nice. Yeah, yeah, we don't like to do that. It's all nice and neat. He was he was yeah. doing the wires. It's the meticulous aspect of it. Nobody ever talks about the nut. What's uh, what's happening with technology and nuts? That a lot of a lot of manufacturers are using just yeah. different materials and different. I'm pretty good friends with the people at Graph Tech, and I've tried their stuff. And I really wanted to like it because I think they're doing some really cool, innovative stuff. And I, I, I have nothing again. I think they're doing really great stuff, but I still find bone to work better and sound better. But I've, I mean, I've tried a lot. I've tried Corian. I've tried the Graph Tech stuff. I've tried all kinds of stuff, and bone just it carves the best. It sounds the best. It's the every now and then, being that it's an organic material, you'll hit a weird void in there, but for the most part, it's just kind of the, and just for me, I think bone by far the best. Where is it exactly harvested from? Uh, I think it's uh, goat bone. Huh. I'm not totally sure, but I, someone had told me once that it's from a goat. I don't know. It went oh, from like a <laughs> bone nut to someone's <laughs> dinner table. That doesn't sound right. So you don't find any of the man-made materials? I haven't found one that I'm in love with, no. I, I, and I, I want to. Um, yeah, me and Tarina at, at uh, Graph Tech are pretty good friends. We have lunch dates every year at NAM. but uh, sorry, man. I'm just. <laughs> I, Usually, I, I, when I get requests for alternate um, nut material, mm -hmm. it's aesthetic. Y you know? Really? And, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, Paul Reed Smith made a big deal about changing. What does he use? I don't know. 
He calls it unobtainium. The wall. He's oh, very casual about it. Unobtainium. Oh, yeah. He, he did it all. Yeah. yeah. I've heard him say that. He did a cool thing where he just threw the, he had a, a tray and he just threw a bunch of nuts down. He said, you know, which one, close your eyes and which ones do you think resonate long? Well, yeah, he, even when you throw the graph tech one on the floor, it sounds great. It sounds like a little xylophone <laughs> key, you know, right. it does. But I'm telling nice you, from sound. a builder standpoint, when I'm carving into that thing, yeah. it, it's really soft and I just don't trust it, you know, because the bottom three strings are like files. They're grooved, you know, and they're just eventually they're going to take material out of there. There's just no way around it. So you know, I'm sticking the roller nuts sound pretty good, though. Huh? In the roller nuts, like the back ones and even the old Wilkinsons? They, I think they're okay. Um, Wilkinsons start to ring out. You get them. moving parts on there and it's going to take, it's, it's going to steal that energy a little mm -hmm. bit, but they're fine. Oh boy. <laughs> Your light? Maybe. Hopefully this works. You want a smaller light? I think I can see. Yeah, I'm good. Better? There you go. Well, <laughs> yeah, now, I'm, now I'm just going to have a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys love coming out and doing the demos in different conditions. Yeah, I'd really <laughs> rather like, be at my own bench. Yeah. I love a good challenge. Hopefully my setup won't be wonky. I wanted to switch away from bone because it smells terrible. <laughs> it's like being at the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to not use bone. Do you find that you have to shim the necks on the guitars from time to time? We don't shim any necks in the custom shop. Um, you know, they, it's been a practice that's gone on for a long time, and we did for a while. And then we had a little situation with the power of the good old internet um, where some guy pulled one out with a shim and it spread really far. This was an older guitar. So what was known as shim gate. And uh, from then on, now we sand neck angle if need be. But it's pretty rare that we do. We, uh, every now and then. And the thing is, here's the, here's the really annoying thing about that, is if you were to design a bridge and you have these adjustment screws that go up and down. When the screw is centered, that's where the optimal space would be, right? So you can go this way or you can go that way. Well, nobody likes that. They want them maxed out so they don't rub against their bum. Yeah, so now we gotta tilt the neck so we can get them up higher, and which actually sounds better. You get more down pressure on these saddles and the guitar will jump to life. Um, it's kind of amazing. That baritone telly that he showed you, when I first strung it up, they were low. And I was bombed. It's like, oh man. <laughs> My God. So I pitched the neck a little, got those saddles way up, and it just, the voice of God came out of the amp. It was great. And made a massive difference. So when you pitched the neck, was, the, was it the pocket you changed? Yeah. Went, was yeah. And a little goes a really long way. It doesn't take much at all. Do you ever do the micro tilt thing? Um, on the three bolts, you know, those of course come with the micro tilt. Um, and we have had requests for them, and so we have done them. Why is the thin line a three bolt? Hmm? Why is the thin line a three bolt? It's just the year. It was the year they went so to. Yeah. yeah. So how many blades is that to give you your depth on the nut? Two. Two? With a couple pieces of tape. And this just gets me close. I still got to fine tune it. I can hear it. you stopping where you're hitting. Yeah. yeah. It's a solid table. Yeah, it's doing a little dance with me. Can you guys oil your nose with cords? Yeah. So every builder recommends. When it needs it, when it looks dry. How do you feel about lid seed oil? Um, it's fine. Yeah, oil. Just uh, we use the lemon oil just because it's pleasant to smell and yeah. readily available. People are always giving us stuff to try out, and I always say I will, and I just kind of throw in the cabinet and forget about it. Do your men uh, recommend using graphite on when you change strings on a bone knot? I don't think it's necessary. No, there's not a ton of movement going on there. Oh, you're using a pumice stone there, Dennis? Just sandpaper. Sandpaper.
Um, a lot of guys focus their energy in different spots. For me, it's all about the tone and feel of the guitar. That's number one for me. Right. Some guys are pretty concerned with the look on a lot of stuff. I'm far less concerned with that. But the nuts are very key for you to tune in, right? It's one of them. Yeah, one of the things. Cool. Amongst others. Yeah, how did you say you come up with the colors for some of the guitars you uh, display at NAMM? <laughs> <laughs> Throw painting at the Yeah. Yeah. I go to our painter, Jay, and say, dude, come up with something cool, will you? Somebody asked Dennis, why was that double neck mandolin telly, uh, uh, what was that, what was that pink? Dennis is good, because I don't care about color, and I let somebody else pick it. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, it sounded great, and that's all I care about. So the way we set our intonation, what we do is, <laughs> is set the high E string to the scale length, which in this case is 25 and a half. And then we do this little stagger deal here. Where you go down, down, up, down, down. Um, and this will pretty much intonate almost all the time. You know, intonation is kind of one of those things. I mean, if the, you know, the, what intonation is, is you're, you're compensating for the fact that you're pushing that guitar string down to the fingerboard and pulling it sharp. It's never going to be perfect unless you get one of those dippy temper tune guitars. But uh, so if your action's lower, you're not pulling it as far, right? It doesn't. <laughs> and you know, of course, the, t the tension. The coolest thing I've seen advancement in that, I can't remember what string company's doing it, but they're making guitar strings that are all equally tensioned which I thought was pretty smart. But yeah, you're just trying to get it compensated the best you can. If your action's low, it's far less of an issue than if it's high. People say don't take all your guitar strings off at once. Uh, on acoustics, I would agree with that. Floyd but Rose. On, on ours, eh, yeah. cut away. <laughs> George is probably over there shaking his head at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't live here, man. It's got his trademark spider on it. Then it's going to be halfway back to California with a new light. <laughs> I'm not going to steal this light. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, and I can. Never seen anybody load strings like that before. Me either. Is that something that you came And I do it every time. I got a, on my bench, I have a, a bar that's my plug bar. And the headstock fits under it just perfect, so it stays put. So yeah, I do it every every time. Strings? Yeah. Uh, custom shop stuff is all tens, unless you specify your own. I just did a one for a Japanese artist, and he wanted nine and a half inch or nine and a half gauge, so I had to track those down. So the USA stuff is nine to forty-two, and custom shop is all ten to forty-six. Correct. Is that the optimal humidity level you should keep? Oh, I have that number. Um, 44 here. That's what it is right now? Yeah. Um, people in here, though. <coughs> yeah, I can't remember the number. I know we've I talked about it a million times. I just, I forget. I don't remember what it is. It just came up. We have the opposite problem where we are. It's so dry. Um, so we're always feeding. And plus, we're, by, we're, we're close enough to the ocean that we get a lot of barium. Like, and the Santa Ana Canyon comes goes right to the ocean. And it goes right behind our factory, so we get the winds coming in that are, oh, on a dry day you can go into the wood room and hear wood cracking. We have fret sprouting like crazy, um, but then we'll get a day where it's like humid as hell. So it, it just, yeah, we have a hard time balancing that. We did a project. We're doing. I should say we're doing a project with Boeing right now because they're having their centennial. So I went up there to tour the facility and check out airplanes um, and I learned something really interesting about aluminum airplanes uh, the humidity on board when you're traveling is about two percent it's super dry so you got to keep drinking or you feel like just utter crap when you get off the plane um, as to where composite airplanes now the new ones like the 787 they're upwards of 22 percent so it got me to thinking if we're sending guitars overseas on an airplane and two percent humidity for like you know, 12 hours. That's Ouch. probably gonna That's take its bad. toll on them. Cargo. Excuse me. I noticed you went about a better than the terminal stud of the next one. I go two I over. Twice. Two over. Yeah, two Is over. Is there a reason for that? How many wraps you want? That's to just tonality. For, yeah. No, well, not tonality. Just where it makes the most sense. All right. You don't want too many wines because then it'll won't stay in tune. 
to two posts beyond yeah two posts BB King used it all though yeah, I know. You never cut it. I know. That was wild. It was like a big old rat's nest down there. Can you believe that was... Nobody's going to ever tell him it didn't sound right anyway. So. Nothing like power tools when you get a new band. Yeah. 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 Thunder University doesn't say to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> this is the master class. You've got to know the rules and break the rules. Yeah, right now I'm just trying to get everything in the ballpark. So why doesn't Fender sell one of those little blocks for the back of the bridge? So you can they should, see shouldn't they? I couldn't nobody, agree more. Sumac doesn't sell them, nobody sells them. We make them now. We, our engineers make one. It's a stepped aluminum one, so you can kind of do it where you want. And uh, all the guys have them on their keychains at work. I don't have one. But uh, yeah, they should. Is that a model of your guitar? Is that like a. 70s. It's just the 69 Strat that I brought in for demo. And again, if somebody falls in love with it, it can be it can find a new home tonight. Do people from Fender go around the country trying to pick up like old guitars and things from shops and sales? And Internet and things like that. We should back to the factory and take a look at them and take them apart. Sometimes someone will just be nice and bring one in, and we document the living daylights out of it. Like Colin brought his. Yeah, Colin Hayes brought in just because he wanted to. You could go to Joe Bonamassa's house. I did. <laughs> We're doing uh, the Howard Reed Strat next, my next project. Which is, legend has it, the very first black Strat. What year is that one, guys? Which one? The Howard Reed? 54. Or 55. I he wouldn't let us take it apart. Yeah. We just had to eyeball it. <laughs> is there one string tree you like better than the others? I know there's a lot of different ones. I like the round ones the best, actually. Yeah, yeah, I didn't say You don't buy any kind of string as much? Or I just like the way they are. I don't know. I like the way they look and feel, and they're fun, easier to put on. And table sounds like the hotel room next to me last night. <laughs> the string tree? Yeah. No, it's it got such a long distance here that it gets buzzy if you don't get that down pressure on the nut. So, yeah, the, what they do, they have a, a what we call a stagger tuner, where the tuners stagger down and they, they're able to pull it down further. But these are all the same going across. So you look at each yeah. Same with locking tuners, they have a stagger. Percentage of the custom shop out that you think is based on building stuff that couldn't see. Um, small percent, seems like um, it's hard to say. I, I usually, as soon as I see how, what, what output is based, Huh? Like total output, custom shop output, like the percentage is like bases. Oh, of bases? It's quite a bit lower. Is it because guitarists like all different options and you make multiple guitars? Bass players are an odd bunch. They, uh, are you a bass player? <laughs> how many basses do you own? Four? Yeah. Because you have like four that just really work for you because you're probably out playing. Yeah, guitar guys will just keep buying them, buying them because they like them. Two are going to be going soon. Bass players are out making money. They, they all ask that question to your bass player, how many you own? And it's always right around three, four. Yeah, what about your guitar player, how many you own? 17, 27. I'm in the 12 step program. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Man. I get to get down there. Yeah, you're in the 12 string program. Yeah. <laughs>
What's the secret to getting it home without getting yelled at? Well, see, it depends. If, if you buy something that's not He's really single. nice, you can usually sneak it in. She doesn't know it. Single, but if it's really unique, that one's tough. And I've had guys tell me, do not call me at this number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. yeah. What you do is you take the empty case out and say, hey, I'm going to go to a jam session and you put the new guitar in right. and bring it home. I'm back. Well, coming here is a problem. I've got a question on the truss rod, too. Okay. Reinforced <laughs> truss rod or can they make a torsion truss rod? Huh? That would reinforced is like carbon graphite. When you turn it, not carbon graphite, it actually bends that rod or is it actually truss pulling together and oh no no it's just the the rod is is put in like this so when you tighten it it wants to straighten out the rod and that pulls the neck right but the rod's already got a bend the, so does the channel yeah, yeah. But you, you find that the truss rods are kind of them messed them up on the old guitars? Guitars? No, I find they work surprisingly good. Yeah, every now and then you'll get an anchor that's spinning in there, but it's pretty rare. Usually they work terrific. So the truss rod technology 50 years ago was still pretty good. It depends. It was at some point we changed our truss rod geometry a little bit, and they sucked. They worked terrible. <laughs> So we got out the old, we cut open an old neck that wasn't any good anymore, and we got the right, the right bow back. Yeah, they nailed it. It's spot on. Yeah. I wonder how much trial and error they went through in the old days. Man, I don't know. Um, that was Leo, right? Sitting around. Man, the, the Strat design is so beautiful, and, and so I mean. Very few modifications over the years, and it was only to, to make the instrument better, nothing just for the sake of changing it, you know. And there's really, um, it's just so elegant, there's really not a lot not a lot you would want to do different. Why would you, you know? Yeah. Well, when you think of the fact that Leo wasn't the guitar player, it's amazing. That he got more yeah. involved with the scopes and the geometry. And it's amazing. The technical part. Yeah, you'd have to give it to somebody, right? And you say, okay, play this now so I can see well, if it's well, you know, we, yeah. we like to talk about like the, the spirit of the custom shop was really there in the beginning because that's exactly what Leo did. He took it out to players and he said, go take this out, do your thing, and I'm just trying to make the, the best tool possible for you, you know? And these guys would give him feedback, and he would, he would tweak the designs based on that. There were some things Leo dug his heels in on, though. He, like, he, uh, he hated the sound of two pickups together. Hated it. Anything in Leo's day doesn't have that sound. Not a single guitar. Hated it. Yeah, these were all three ways. And uh, he just refused to bend on that. Isn't it the buddy guy to take the match and stick it in there? Hendrix the the stick the match in there to, to get in between? Right the <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. What distance do you like that? These we set at 430 seconds on the bass side, 330 seconds on the treble. Yeah, Middle is in between. Yeah. They're all the same. Oh. Bass and treble. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it, are those, uh, are those, are those pickup heights the same for the tally? Yes. Four thirty seven three thirty seven. Certainly. Four and three. Yeah. What is the angle of the uh, lead pickup? <laughs> the angle of it? Yeah, what and is the idea so of the, cool the mega Oh, you mean why do they angle yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, to make the bass bassier and the treble a little treble I love the way you want to bite on the treble. Yeah, because, you know, if you pick down here, it sounds different so many iconic songs, you know? Dazzle us, man. Yes! All right, hey, come on, give me a hand. All right. I just put him on the spot and asked him to play for you guys. Thank you. 
baby. Yeah. yeah. Right on, man. Thousand dollars more now that I paid. <laughs> <laughs>